So the next scene in the experience is one in which we show asteroid impacts over uh, about 13 years. And so this is plotted on the Earth. Um, so I did a couple things. I, I created an Excel spreadsheet with, with asteroid locations, um, asteroid impact locations. It has a, a date, um, an end time, a color, an energy, an energy range, and then a location. Um, and so it also has a, a, a location and text as well as a latitude and longitude. So when you open up this table and load in Worldwide Telescope, you can um, make sure the mapping is correct. It'll automatically get latitude and longitude. Um, I, didn't, I, I put a depth column, that way it would capture a depth of zero instead of asking me. Um, in this case, these have a date. Um, this has a start and end date over the length of the entire uh, visualization. So the data were acquired from 2000 to 2014. So the, this this Excel spreadsheet has the entire um, uh, has the entire um, has every object living through the entire um, time time frame. Uh, I have another one, which is a time sequence, which is ex exactly identical, but here the beginning and end dates are different. So um, this starts on 8:25. Uh, of one year and it has a duration of one year. So I, I give every object a duration of one year and um, and then I load this into Worldwide Telescope. Um, by going into Worldwide Telescope tab, uh, control A to select the, the uh, area, visualize selection. Again, it came up with these mappings automatically um, and then you say visual, view in WWT. By doing that it creates a layer in WWT, and so this is a time sequence layer which comes and goes, and then this one called all is the one that's there the entire time. Um, and so then, in order for me to make this visualization work, which I can show you what the timeline looks like, um, I simply um, have the, the underlying layer, which is responsible for these small dots, um, on all the time. And then, um, as time goes on, uh, there'll be impacts that are larger that will come and go. Um, there are a few per, only a few per year, but there's one that happened over here. Um, and at the same time, under camera, I was... Um, Uh, I was basically changing the longitude um, of the camera every, at a regular interval that created a, a, the rotation of the Earth in front of me. So um, here I'm. I started at a, at a um, over here at a longitude of uh, it's like minus twenty four. Um, and then I had another longitude of minus 90 at 8 seconds, a longitude of minus 180 at 16 seconds. So every 8, every eight seconds, I rotated another 90 degrees. Um, and then as long as that was kept regular, it appeared that the Earth was having a smooth rotation under me. Um, and then at the same time, I changed the zoom level of the camera um, under zoom. Uh, now there, I chose the zooms to be at a different cadence. So here's a zoom, a zoom keyframe of six. I go between 65 when I'm close in to um, a smaller number when I'm out. Uh, 150. Uh, a larger number, which is which is a, which is a more distant view, um, and so by combining together one cadence for smoothly going uh, in and out at, the, at another cadence, which is the rotation of the Earth, uh, you're able to get a fair amount of visual interest in this in the um, in the scene, even though it is a rather um, 
didactic um, visual representation compared to the other scenes of, of, of the show. Um, but I think it, was, it, it is effective and is, um, gives people a, a chance to see um, where these after impacts happen and uh, to get a sense of the frequency.